Good day, and welcome to another episode of Sonic Curators. I am so very pleased to be here today at the Cambridge Masonic Temple. Uh, this is my home. This is the room that my father was raised in. This is the room that I was raised in almost 40 years ago. And joining me here today is the past master of my mother lodge, Amapur Lodge, worshipful David Porter, who is also now the current district deputy grand master of the second Masonic district here in Massachusetts. And I introduce to you right worshipful David Vogel, who is going to give you a brief history of the temple. Dave? Thank you, Kim. And it was also my honor and privilege to be raised at the same altar in this room that Keith was raised in. So the Cambridge Temple was constructed during the period known in the United States as the Great American Masonic Temple Construction Period. From about 1890 to 1930, almost three quarters of the Masonic buildings that currently stand were erected. Many are no longer used for Masonic purposes, but a great many, such as this one, still are. The cornerstone was laid with Masonic ceremonies on June 30th, 1910. And after a year and two months, it was completed. The first lodge to use the completed building used it in September 1st, 1911. The building was dedicated on October 18th, 1911, with over 500 people present. The temple is over 29,000 square feet with three floors, a full basement and two sub-basements. The two banquet halls were located in the basement with two kitchens. With the combined use of both kitchens and banquet halls, it is said that almost 500 people could be served a sit-down meal. The temple boasted nine bathrooms, a full and functional stage with men's and women's dressing rooms. The entire building was dedicated to Freemasonry with three lodge rooms, an armory, ladies room, smoking room, library, director's room, examination room, and even a private bathroom for the worshipful master. Three fireplaces were there of which two are in working order today. It cost over $94,000 in then current funds to construct. Uh, they raised over 30,000 subscriptions from various Masonic bodies, and the remaining mortgage was paid off by donations and various fundraisers over 10 years. Though nothing publicly historical ever took place within these walls, a lot of Masonic history can be found. The temple was home to nine Masonic lodges, two orders of the Eastern Star, a Royal Arch chapter, a council of royal and select masons, ma masters, commandery of Knights Templar, de Malay, and other various Masonic clubs and groups. The main lodge room, which we are taping in today, is called Endicott Hall. A past Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Masons, of Massachusetts and past master of two Cambridge lodges uh, gave his name to the hall. The room is 65 feet long, 40 feet wide, and 22 feet high. When constructed, it was outfitted to hold 300 on the floor and another 100 in the balcony, which is located behind the camera today. The pipe organ loft, constructed by Etsy Pipe Organ Company of Vermont, is eight feet wide five feet deep and 16 feet high. At the time the pipe organ was installed in 1911, Etsy stated that it was the finest pipe organ they had installed in any Masonic building. Cambridge at one time was a huge fraternal hub in Massachusetts. Over 30 different fraternal organizations called Cambridge home, including the Grand Lodge of the Knights of St. George, the Odd Fellows, and many ethnic, social, and religious fraternal groups. In Freemasonry alone, Cambridge was home to 37 Masonic bodies, including three de Malay chapters, two first of its kind in the United States. De Malay chapters were to be associated with universities, MIT and Harvard. It is home to the first university lodge in the United States, Richard C. McLaurin Lodge, or MIT Lodge. 
three university lodges, once called Cambridge Hall, uh, Richard C. McLaurin, the Harvard Lodge, and Boston University Lodge. So many Masonic bodies once occupied and used the building that it was in use almost every weeknight, sometimes used by two or more bodies on the same night. The land on which the building sits today and the area around it is called Porter Square, and it is rich in local history. We are the only Masonic building located on Massachusetts Avenue, which is one of the longest streets in Massachusetts. The land's history dates back to at least 1767, when Nathaniel Prentice built a home and barn here. On the famous day of April 1775, Brother William Dawes rode past this land as he warned the citizens that the British were coming as he headed west to Lexington. On that night, as recorded by the Daughters of the American Revolution 100th Anniversary Yearbook, Nathaniel Prentice gathered his family and sent them to a relative's home as he marched out with Captain Thatcher's company for Concord. 50 feet away from the temple, the retreating British from Lexington and Concord took a left as they retreated back to Charlestown. 200 feet behind the current Masonic Temple was, were the cattle yards of Porter Square, where beef for the Boston market would be unloaded from train cars. Huge cattle pens dotted the landscape behind the land of the current temple. 40 feet away stood the Porter House Hotel, whence originated the well-known Porter House Steak. Today, the building is still home to four Masonic bodies, a large lodge of instruction, and a royal arch chapter. It remains a shimmering light of Freemasonry here in Porter Square on Massachusetts.